So today let's talk about three big keys about the resumes, do's and don'ts, but really great techniques. And I'm gonna get into some really good detail here about what you should be thinking about as you write your resume, where this came from. I don't know if some of you caught it. Yesterday I did a morning talk show one of the popular morning TV shows called The Jam in Chicago. They're going through jobs month in September. The producer called me uh, a week or so ago, wanted me to come on the show, which is tons of fun. I love doing the morning talk shows. And he looked at me and he said, hey, we've got jobs month going on. My executive producer told me I needed to call you. I looked at your stuff. You talk about everything. Is there anything in particular that you want to speak to our audience about? And I said, yeah, resumes. People hate writing resumes. It's terrible, it's difficult to do. People you know, have lots of problems articulating themselves in, in the best light. Let's talk about that. He said, great, give me three points. So I did. Now, I talked about them yesterday over a maybe three or four minute clip, but today you're gonna get tons of detail on them. Let's get rolling. The first thing that I wanna talk about with resume writing is you need to know how someone looks at your resume. How somebody looks at your resume. Now a lot of you that have been following me for a while, you know I got a lot of stuff out there on resumes. We've got videos, I've got a great webinar, I've done a number of other special things related to the resume, but resumes are not read left to right and top to bottom. They don't. People don't read resumes like they read a book. Uh, keep in mind what the employer is going through or probably the recruiter or some human resource official is opening up a resume, looking at it very, very, very quickly. The first place their eyes go is to the top center of the resume. They're just trying to get a feel for who you are. So I wanna talk about what that means for you. If, if, if their eyes go to the top center of the resume initially, that is, it's like your smile. It's like the first thing that they see, are you smiling, beaming bright, saying you are gonna love looking at my resume, or are you gonna fall flat? And I'm gonna show you a few samples of what the top of a resume can look like. But this is really important that you grab their attention first. So, top center, Top center, top center. You need to be thinking about what is that going to look like. Now, this is so critical. I, actually, I wanna spend a lot of our talk today on what to do, what not to do. First thing, let's talk about what not to do. What not to do. Under no circumstances, it doesn't matter if you're a college student or a pro, do not include an objective statement. I, don't, I have absolutely no idea where objective statements came from, None, mind you, uh, because it would never make sense to me at any point in our existence why anybody would put something that they want on a, on a document intended to show what you offer. So an objective statement is typically what is your objective in seeking this job, in your career, whatever it might be. There's no place anywhere in the resume for that. There are other vehicles that you could use, the email, or the cover letter or some, some other things, but definitely no objective statement. And, and for both of you, uh, students and professionals, your education should also not be the first thing somebody sees. They'll get to it soon enough. Even if you're a college student, resist the temptation to put your education at the top. Your degree is not a voucher to anything anymore. You need you need more, employers are looking for more, so you gotta give them more up front before they get to your education. The other thing that you shouldn't do is don't go right into the current company that you are working for. So I'll, and I'll explain in detail why we don't wanna do this, but if this is your place to shine and show them who you are in all your glory, at least at a summary level, starting with where you're currently working, is just gonna answer the question, where are you now? And then they're gonna to have to look through the rest of the, of, the, uh, of the resume to figure out who you really are. So don't put your company in there. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that. I'll give you some more clarity on that. Don't put tables. Don't put tables anywhere in, in your resume, but especially not at the top. Especially not at the top. Tables are, are, are boring. They uh, oftentimes don't include the right information. Applicant tracking systems don't like them. So, so don't put tables up at the top. And whatever you do, 
and nowhere in the resume, but especially not at the top, should you be putting any opinions about yourself. So these are things like those meaningless buzzwords that say that you are detail oriented, a strong communicator, a leader, or whatever it is that you think you are and may very well be, but on a resume, you need evidence to back that up. So don't put those words anywhere. We want you to put evidence inside the resume so that you can show the employer that you are a detail-oriented person, great leader, organized, or whatever it might be. So those are things that I don't want you to do. Now I wanna talk a little bit more about conceptually what's going on at the top of the resume. Some people think, well, I need to have a lot of white space there. It's more pleasing on the eye. Uh, you know, people have a difficult time if there's a lot of text there, skimming the text, and I've been told that I should list my skills at the top and all of that stuff. Now, let me, let me, let me answer a few of these for you very specifically. I want to actually show you a little something about skimming, and I thought this might be a, a pretty decent way to, uh, to do that. Look at this sentence. I bet it doesn't take you but a mere two seconds to read that or that. Can you make that out? If you can make that out, give me a hey in the, in the chat or something. Say whatever you want. But I'm guessing that you could read that sentence no problem. Absolutely, absolutely no problem. So imagine, let me go back to my face for a second. If, I'm assuming you can read that. Imagine what a trained recruiter can do with a few seconds when those words are spelled correctly and they see hundreds of resumes a day, day in, day out for years and years and years. So you guys get my point. If I know what I'm looking for and you are giving me the right kind of context to frame it, I can pick that up in a nanosecond, in a nanosecond. So trust me when I tell you, this is what I'm talking about. And now imagine, imagine these samples I'm going to show you. And I want you to just for a second, think about how you feel, just about the way they look and the content that you're gonna see. Let me switch, let me switch back here. But let's take a look at John Smith. What do you know about this guy? He's a senior project manager. See all that other stuff? Look at all that. To me, those three words he put there, senior project manager, was really all I needed to know. It was all I needed to know because all that other stuff below, all that other stuff below is stuff that any project manager would know, especially a senior project manager. I already know that, so I wouldn't even spend any time looking at it. What about my girl Jane here? Look at Jane's profile. So in Jane's instance, now, now I want you to also cut me some slack here because I had, to, I had to frame these together and I made the font bigger at the top because I had more real estate to do that. But assuming that all of these were the same font and you took a look at Jane's, uh, Jane's profile, look at her. So when I look at this, I can see senior project manager on the left, information technology, Fortune 500, financial, healthcare, software development, 500K, two mil, 525. I could get all of that in, in, a, in a one or two seconds and I know I am gonna absolutely love looking at this resume. Now, at below that, she has this core competencies paragraph, if you see that. Notice how in John Smith's case, with the table, with the table, I just listed all the exact same 12 things. Now, here's the interesting part. In John Smith's case, I just blew by it. In Jane's case, I held, she held me up at the top because I really wanted to kind of soak in that first paragraph because it looked like the way the text reads is that she's got rich words in there. I can already tell there's, there's more factual words and interesting words rather than those buzz, buzzwords in there. The second paragraph the second paragraph, I wanna go, I wanna go back to, I wanna go back to me. The second paragraph in, in, in the Jane Doe one where she had the two little paragraphs, I wouldn't even have read that. I wouldn't even have read that. 
that's okay. That's not the point. She already had my attention and she had laid the foundation, which if I would have read the second paragraph, would have made the second paragraph believable to me. John Smith, he didn't do any such thing. He, he gave me nothing. So I have to go buy that. So now he basically wasted two and a half inches of his resume telling me nothing. Some people, however, might read Jane's second paragraph with the core competencies. They might look to see, does she have anything out of the ordinary? But you know who's going to read that paragraph 100% of the time? The computer. The applicant tracking system. Remember, resumes are not solely for people. They are for, hopefully, people. That's what the goal is to get them to the person and to then to wow them and then to get the interview. But you also, a lot of you, are going to have to get them past the applicant tracking system. Well, the applicant tracking system is going to pick up the second paragraph of the second example, Jane's example. The applicant tracking system is not going to recognize the bullets in the hidden table that's inside the Microsoft Word doc that you looked at. So applicant tracking systems don't like tables. They don't like graphics. They don't like acronyms. They don't like a lot of these things. The research has shown this. And a lot of the tools that are out there uh, support this and educate us on that. So my experience of looking at over a half a million resumes tell, tells me the second one works more effectively. My informal interviews with hundreds of companies who are my clients tell me that. The surveys that we run with side-by-side -side samples of resumes and ask people to choose the preferred format tell me this. And the applicant tracking system tells us this. This is why the top center of the, of the resume is so important. And if you think for one second that you are repeating yourself. Jane Doe put together a profile that immediately got me excited, gave me a frame of reference for what I'm about to read, and she put my bias on the positive side because now I'm excited. John Smith, on the other hand, put me to sleep, and it's, 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 you know, when I have to go through all these resumes, if I'm a human resources person or a recruiter working for a company, I'm getting all these, it's just, it's not exciting to me. I'm, 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 I'm not in a great mood when I get down to the rest of your resume. But Jane gets the benefit of the doubt. So you get to control the narrative. Plus, plus, for all of you career changers, for all of you that are staying within the same types of jobs, but maybe you want to get back to your roots or something that you did three years ago or eight years ago, you can pull a lot of this stuff forward. This is why it's so important to have a career profile. You get to say whatever you want to say up top. So the top center, stay away from those things that I told you to avoid. And this is more in line with, with what I would do at the top center. All right, let's talk about point number two. Uh, the, there are lots of formats that are out there and I favor, always have, always will favor the chronological format. And I guess technically, specifically, I mean the reverse chronological format for the work experience section of your resume or the professional experience section, whatever it may be, that simply means you've got the company name at the, you know, kind of the top left of that section. Then maybe you have a little line or two about what the company does and what you're doing within the company, then, the then your title and then your responsibilities and then your previous title and those responsibilities and so on. And then the next, the, the further back you go in time, those companies list those out in order as well so that your first company or your, the, most, the, most, uh, the, the longest ago company that you have on your resume whenever you decide to cut your resume is, is at the bottom. There are other types of resumes. You guys have probably seen them or heard of them, the skills-based resume or the functional resume. The skills-based resume highlight those features you have. So in uh, uh, John Smith's example where he has project management or quality assurance testing or whatever, he might call those out and then highlight the companies that he worked at that he worked at where he actually gained those skills. The reason that those 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 styles those layouts are ineffective is number one the the second question that an employer has after who are you is where are you 
first, I mean, think about it. I know a lot of you are senior people. You're in my, you're, you know, you're in my programs. You're in my community. You follow me, you email me, and you comment on my stuff. And I know you're in your 40s and your 50s and your 60s. And a lot of you are hiring people. Think about when you get a functional resume. What's the first question you want to know? Where are they now? Or where were they most recently? And it, it's very difficult to tell. So employers, hirers, HR people, recruiters, whoever it is, they like to see that chronological order. It shows them the evolution. The other thing that the skills-based or the functional-based resumes do is they put suspicion in the mind of the recruiter, like you're trying to hide something from me. As a matter of fact, I kid, I, I kid you not, when I get a functional resume, the first thing that goes through my head is I now start looking at what, what are they trying to hide that's actually where my attention goes. So think about that. You've now put me in a position where I'm looking for something bad, like a gap in an employment. I don't mind if you have a gap in employment. Show me where it is. So just just really, really stick to the stick stick to the chronology. It's much easier. It's much easier for everybody to follow. Now, third point that I want to make is about the way in which you articulate yourself in the bullets themselves or the sentences that you write, whether it's in the career profile or I also recommend a career highlight section for those of you that have the Andy Lazavita template. But I also want you to focus on your accomplishments and your benefits. And I will sh I'm going to give you a little sample here on the, on the PowerPoint here of what I mean. But employers, and I say this a lot in my resume writing uh, programs, that it's not just good enough to show them what you what you did. Employers want to know what you did, but they really want to know what happened as a result of what you did. What happened as a result of what you did? So uh, let me give you let me give you an example. I'm going to flip back here to the screen, and let's let's leave Jane and and and, and John here. So if you manage the customer service department with 10 employees. I see a lot of resumes that say, mm, I manage the customer service department with 10 employees. What doesn't this tell me? Are you a good manager? Do your people get promoted? Do they love you? Actually, are your customers happier? Have you done anything to streamline those processes or whatever? So this probably has some place on the resume. It could probably be broken up. It could be buried. It could be up in the summaries, but I would much rather see a bullet uh, that said something like, I raised customer satisfaction 33% by designing and implementing processes that reduced time to answer customer inquiries by half. I put something in place. I put something in place that made our customers a lot happier because it only takes two minutes to get back to them or they only have to stay on hold two minutes and I can answer the question in two minutes instead of eight. So these are the kinds of things that I think are very, very important for you to, to get onto your resume, whether you're putting them in the highlight section, which you should be, or and, and putting them in the professional uh, experience section, which you should be. So if you focus, you know, kind of the do's and don'ts, if you focus on making sure that the top center of your resume sings and gets people excited to read it, you make sure that you lay it out in a great format chronologically that's easy for them to see what hopefully is a nice career evolution for you. And there's tons of ways we can handle all your exceptions. And I've got a video out there on every single one of them. So you can find it, whatever your issue is. And the third thing that I would do is I'd make sure you're focusing on your accomplishments and your benefits in addition to what your responsibilities are. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. There was no way I was getting all that in in three and a half minutes or four minutes or whatever my little TV segment was yesterday. But I wanted to bring it to you, my people, because I get to be the executive producer the talent, the sound engineer, and everything else related to Thursday Live Office Hours with Andy. So if you're loving this, give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up.